The following podcast contains adult language, profound stupidity, hardcore nudity, and drug references. Children should not listen to it. Everyone else but fucking Olive. Nailed it. Plotty Time, the podcast where we three gamers discuss video game stories in detail with all the necessary and appropriate backlash. My name is Papa Scotch, and with me, as always, is Chump Slap. You probably think I'm the greasy strangler, don't you? <laughs> and then on the other side of the table, Dr. Scientist. I get paid to do the wild thing. <laughs> <laughs> so are you guys just going to mix up your catchphrases every week? I'm gonna yeah. try. <laughs> I debated. Try. I deba- debated taking one from Psych about getting sixth place. <laughs> well, save it for next time. I mean, <laughs> don't spoil it. <laughs> All right. So, do to do to do. How about well, let's get into uh, what we've been doing in the last week? How does that sound? How about you, uh, Doctor Scientist? What have you been playing? What have you been watching? What have you been stealing? What's going on? Well, I finished watching the Boss Speedrun Marathon. Like the uh, Bruce Springsteen speed run? Yeah, or? yeah, him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, what else did I watch? I watched the old Kate Beckinsale Alice in Wonderland. Oh, yeah? It's hard to watch because you forget how bad CGI graphics were then because they didn't exist. What year was that? Did 98 or 99. What are you Ooh. talking about? That's like almost around the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> it's like five years after Jurassic Park. They should have figured it out by then. <laughs> That's how this works, right? I yeah. think so. And uh, I beat Detroit Become Human. Ooh, how how was it? it was Obviously, you didn't hate it because you played the whole thing. Did you become human? Nah, yeah. Ooh. Eh. Interesting. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was debating playing it again, but I think about just leaving it go the way it is, the way I played it originally. Not getting any more trophies. So it's a multiple ending type game? Yeah. Well, obviously. I mean, it's just like Heavy Rain. Just like Makes sense. And then I played a couple indie games, Reverie and Observation. Observation was really good. It's a, you're on a spaceship, oh well not a spaceship, kind of like a space station, and there's an explosion, and you wake up, and you have to try and figure out what happened, but the catch is you're the AI. And there's like one person there that's telling you to do like, look for survivors here, and you get to move around the cameras and stuff as he's looking around. And that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was. it was awesome. I enjoyed it a lot. It sounds different, but and that's where like indie games uh, thrive. Those experimental weird stuff. Yeah, Shit, yeah. But it was interesting because he's like, "Look for survivors here," and then like the cameras aren't on, so you got to get the cameras turned on and open up hatchways and stuff. And so is it more like a puzzle type game, kind of? Yeah, but it's like a sci-fi story. Oh, okay. Because like in the well, it's not going to ruin anything if anybody plays it, but. Like, you, uh, you're in a space station, and then the girl wakes up and tells you to come online and do all this stuff. And eventually, you look out the window, and you're at Saturn, because you're supposed to be at Earth. And you're wondering how you got there. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the name of that game one more time? Observation. Observation. It's the name of the space station. Observation. Cool, cool. What have you uh, you been playing anything else, or what are you watching? Well, I just beat that last night, so. Oh, be- two, you got two beats this week. Three, because I beat Reverie, too, but that was only like a little <laughs> indie game. I think we had you complete two in one of those early episodes. Yeah, I played two one. games, I think it was, yeah. yeah. And then we're like, well, you're, this is going to set a precedent. you got to beat like four games every week now, and then you hadn't done it since. Yeah, I, I beat uh, Detroit Become Human during the week, and then Friday night I beat Reverie, and yesterday I beat Observation. Hmm. Nice. Not to brag. Nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> what else are you going to do be- from 12 to 8 in the morning. Um, I had another person suggest to me uh, Man of Medan. You were talking about that, right? You played that? I didn't play it. I watched some people play it. But uh, yeah, okay. it's just like Until Dawn, except a lot shorter. Yeah, I guess it's coming out in like chapters or something like that. Is it? No idea. Segments or chapters, like the first part just came out. They're going to release more later. Oh. The ones I watched, I thought it was the whole game. No, I don't think so, because that thing retails for like 30 bucks. 
which is like the telltale sort of price point, you know? Yeah. So I assume to be at least <clears throat> that long. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What have you been? Uh, you watch anything fun? Besides what I told you earlier, no. So you didn't get a chance to check out Clown NATO yet? No. <laughs> I completely forgot about it. I usually ignore your guys' texts. How That's could you forget about it? So it's a tornado of clowns. Yeah, but they're not sharks, so kind of like, eh. At least Sh- sharks are realistic. Shark Clownado. Sharks are realistic. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather watch a yeah, not like clowns. killer clowns from outer space. Well, that's just an American classic. Yeah. That's all that is. Yeah. Well, uh, then what about you, Jump Slap? What have you been playing? What have you been watching? What's going on? Uh, I downloaded Toe Jam and Earl. Fucking finally. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, I'll say it's not worth the $12. <laughs> <laughs> I told yeah. you to wait for it to be nine. You should wait. <laughs> I agree. It is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like exactly like the uh, original Sega version, just with updated graphics, basically. Yeah, I forgot how annoying it was when you accidentally get rocket skates. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Macaulay Culkin didn't need your money. We don't know that. That's true. Yeah, well, when was the last time you saw him in a movie? Party monster? Yeah. No, no. Uh, Scott Pilgrim. Or is that his brother? That was his brother. Oh, same person. <laughs> I don't think that's yep. how that works. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys would fucking know. <laughs> I don't know Jesus. what that means. <laughs> Are you okay. eating something? Absolutely not. That would be rude. <laughs> <laughs> that's why there's still video. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you been playing anything else? That you actually en- enjoyed? I don't know how, but... I mean, I enjoyed Toe Jam and Earl, but I played, like, for hour and a half, and then it was like, oh, you just beat the tutorial. I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I nice. got a whole bunch of other game to go after this. Yeah, apparently. So that's all I really played. Uh, I did watch Clownado. <laughs> I tried oh. to. It was atrocious. Wow. It has to be really bad for him to say that. How far did you get? Probably like 15 minutes. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> that I just zoned that out. does not bode well. <laughs> it's just it's the bad quality in acting. No. Clown NATO? Well, you're telling me someone pitched that and they couldn't get funding? <laughs> get out. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's telling you. That's what I'm saying. All right. All right. Did you watch anything to completion, possibly? Yeah, I watched The Greasy Strangler again. Because <laughs> that movie is just fucking weird. I haven't seen it. Would you uh, give us a quick rundown? It's about a guy who is greasy and strangled. Coat, coats himself in grease, oil, fat, shit, and kills people. And it's ridiculous. It sounds ridiculous. It's a very strange movie. It's stranger than rubber i'd say that sounds amazing and rubber was terrible i loved rubber rubber I'm was great i have no idea what's good this one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah that's pretty much all i did i didn't do shit all else what did you do papa scotch besides play uh division two I actually didn't play Division 2, you jerk, first of all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, 99% of the episodes we've done, you could have led with that and been correct. So, <laughs> you know, I don't blame you for that. But uh, I platinumed and finished Control, oh, which nice. was uh, really good. Really enjoyed it. I don't know. Do you have a hard copy? No, I d- got it digitally. Yeah. But uh, so you can't borrow it. Well, it wasn't smart because th- I bought the uh, the one with the DLC included, so I got to wait for that to come out. But I don't know if like the length of the game was worth 50, 60 bucks. What kind of DLC are they going to put in? Now they're just throwing DLC on anything. That's I think it's, it's just more, yeah, more missions, that kind of stuff. More stuff to collect. More uh, altered items you got to find. Shit like that. Isn't it all in an office building? Short answer, yes. That's all I was Uh-oh. looking for. But it's a warp, warped office building. It has a sh- has a shit world. <laughs> yeah. Sort of. It's it's uh, 
it originally was an office building, but then it turned into an uh, altered item called the house, and it just, like, as far as physics go, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you go into that, like, a small room, and then it suddenly expands into this massive area. Spoilers. Oh, yeah. That's, like, the... the okay. I thought it was, like, Cube. <laughs> yeah. Or Cube 2. <laughs> or Cube 3, the cubing. <laughs> there is a Cube 3. Oh, is there? Cubed again is what it's called. Cube cubed. Ooh. <laughs> that would be nine. You're welcome for the idea, cube <laughs> license owners. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much all I played. I played a little bit of Madden and stuff like that, but that doesn't really count. No, never did. No, and then <laughs> right, never did. <laughs> uh, as far as watching stuff, what did I watch? I don't think I watched a whole lot this week. Just like stand up comedy and stuff like that. Did you watch the new Chappelle? No, I haven't watched that yet. Have you? Yeah, it's pretty good. Other than that, I mean, I watched some reruns of Bob's Burgers, which is oh. always an amazing show. That's, uh, that's about it. I got nothing else, guys. Wow. All right. All right, throw some news at me. Do I have news? I did have news, but I don't remember what I did with it. Did we already talk about how Telltale got bought? Yeah. Well, that's that's my news article for the day. Yeah, we talked about it last week. Thought so. There was an article that came out that said uh, the head of Bioware, I forget who, what his name is now, but they basically... James Bioware. <laughs> Bob. Bob Bioware. <laughs> <laughs> he came out and said... Uh, that they have a bunch of secret projects in the mix, which is like, yeah, I should fucking hope so. That's your job. Yeah, you know? <laughs> exactly. And everyone's trying to like make a new story out of this, but they won't say if it's a, like a new IP or if it's a sequel. And do they, pretty do they much have anything that deserves a sequel? I mean, no. I'd love to see him fix Mass Effect, but the chances of that happening are... Did you ever play Andromeda? No, neither never did, did I. I don't even. I, I saw it for seven bucks and still didn't buy it. Yeah, I saw it for seven bucks like three weeks after it came out. They gave it for free. Like, I might eh. download it, but I don't think I'll play it. <laughs> I'll download it, but not play it. So much I hate it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did. Uh, I went to the movies yesterday. I forgot to say that, and uh, saw it chapter two. Yeah. It w- uh, it basically, if you like the first chapter, you'll like this one. So it has I a land monster. I shouldn't see it. Um, if you did not like the first one, the original one or the first no, new one, the first new one, the second Have one. Then, s- <laughs> jeez, <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Not the TV miniseries. <laughs> okay, the one that was released like two years ago. Yeah, I don't think I liked it. Have you Tim Curry as Pennywise? Yeah, no, it was Stellan Skarsgård. I don't remember. Not Stellan Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård. One what? of the Skars. They're the same Skarsgård. person. Skarsgård. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> They're not even no, brothers. There's like, they are? There's like four of them. Yeah, I thought they were all brothers. I have no idea. Or is Stellan the dad? Again, another thing we could easily look up and we're... I'm, I'm pretty sick of hearing about it already. Any other news? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and... Move on a little bit. Uh, do to do to do. Uh, there's a movie coming out called Doctor Sleep. Have you guys heard about this? It's like a uh, sequel to The Shining. Wow, another movie that didn't need a sequel. Yeah, it's yeah. uh looks all right, but who knows? Yeah. Does it have Jack Nicholson in it? No, the. Lead actor is Ewan McGregor, who is playing a grown-up version of uh, the little kid in The Shining. I forget his name. According to The Simpsons, everyone died at the end of The Shining. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were still alive. You don't know if they were dead. Oh, they were frozen, though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they just couldn't move. I'm sure they're fine, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the Joker won the top prize at the Venice Film Festival. Not interested. I kind of want to see it. Yeah, I think it looks interesting. Yeah. But uh, everybody wants to be, uh, what's his name's Joker? Heath Ledger's Joker, and it's kind of annoying. Yeah, but he, this guy doesn't look anything like it. 
I heard that, or I read a review where someone was talking about how it's so, like, it feels weird being in the DC universe. Like, it could have been, uh, a not, like, if they wouldn't have called the character the Joker and not named it Joker, it would have been fine if you didn't have any connection to the DC universe. Yeah, they should just Like, the story it makes sense. Clownado. <laughs> Clownado, yeah. <laughs> it would have been a better name. Perfect. Clowns are, uh, I don't know. There's some good clown puns out there, right? Clowns aren't people. Whoa, whoa. Hey, hot take. <laughs> clown lives matter. I don't think so. How are we going to get those Montana listeners if you keep talking that <laughs> shit against clowns? <laughs> Is anybody ever going to not laugh at a clown dying in a horrific way? Yeah, a lot of people won't. I don't think so. I mean, the clown's parents, I guess? Clowns don't have parents. Yeah, they're made in labs. feelings and doesn't want to see a human die. I don't, they're not human. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Racist. <laughs> I was... Th- you know what? It's Let's go a, ahead and... Yeah, I don't know. T- scientist. Classic Classic scientist. Classic <laughs> scientist. <laughs> Hating on the less fortunate, in this case, which are clowns. <laughs> hey, most clowns have it better off than I do. <laughs> All right. It's probably it, most, true. <laughs> most? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's most likely true, yes. <laughs> I mean, maybe a handful... You know what? I'm really not into the uh, underground clown scene. Yeah, name so one unsuccessful clown. <laughs> yeah, I bet you can't. <laughs> I, you're right. I can't. <laughs> I can't name a single unsuccessful clown. You don't see what clowns else? homeless. That's true. <laughs> you're, yeah, I well. guess. Well, you do see hobo clowns though. Yeah, but they're looking. They're not clown hobos. How do you know? Because they're performing <laughs> at parties. How do you know? Yeah. For Beer money. <laughs> Are you more into the underground uh, clown scene than I am? Yeah. <laughs> He's been there. That's how he knows they're all better off than him. Yeah. He got shunned out of it. Classic scientist. <laughs> Again. Did you see, I see the uh, the new trailer for the new Bad Boys movie? Sounds like another movie that didn't need a sequel. What, Bad Boys 3? Yeah, Bad Boys for Life, it's called. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it does. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's amazing how wrong you two guys can be all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I don't hate everything. Yeah, you do. No, I mean, he hates a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more focused. <laughs> yes, I focus my hate. That's right. It's, it's not immediate hate at everything. <laughs> It's, no, this sucks, and let me tell you why. Let me tell you how bad. <laughs> Not to speak for you, but there we go. All right, so uh, how about we just get into this game? Let's just. Yeah, why? The game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week, we are going to be talking about the Xbox, PlayStation, PC, Classic, Borderlands 2. Is this our first sequel? We no. had this conversation five seconds ago. Oh, no. Ago. That's <laughs> right. We, we did uh, we did Sly Cooper. Of course we did. I'm pretty sure I wasn't involved in that conversation. I'm pretty sure you were. Mm. Yeah, when we asked most downloaded episodes, <laughs> yeah. what came in at number two. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. But Every we didn't week. ask ourselves, is this our first sequel? Yeah. Okay. okay. It's fine. Fine. Our <laughs> second sequel we ever did. Borderlands 2. Well, that's actually the third. Madden 19. Oh. Was, was the sequel. Well, in fourth, because Kane and Lynch was two. <laughs> any, anything, any other <laughs> corrections you guys want to make while we're fucking here at all? No, that should be it. I think that's it. I mean. We're back on track. Yeah. The fourth sequel. I mean, there was a spiritual successor in oh, there. Oh, Jesus but Christ. <laughs> 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 all right. Start over. <laughs> any hoodles. So this game is called Borderlands 2. It's the second fucking Borderlands that came out. <laughs> it was released September 18th, 2012, which was seven years ago. It doesn't wow. feel like it was that long. Almost exactly seven years ago, actually. But uh, it is a first-person shooter slash, well, I guess in addition, a loot shooter, we could call it, with some RPG elements. First-person looter. <laughs> first person oh boy okay <laughs> i asked if you had enough and you guys didn't 
uh, <laughs> written by a man by the name of Anthony Birch. Uh, who picked this game for us this week? I did, because Borderlands 3 comes out this week. So, Ooh. Okay, why don't you give us a little lead into the story, or maybe a previously on, or tell us where we're at right now in the story. Well, you should go listen to our Borderlands overcat review. Yes, you nice should. Plug. Nice plug. Love it. And we'll stop here for a second so you can do that. And, and we're back. We're back. <laughs> so the second one starts off right where the first, well, not right where, starts with Marcus. I don't know if you meet Marcus in the first game. Yeah. Yeah, at least go to his gun stores, his whatever. He, he's the uh, he's the driver of the bus, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, he's telling a story about what happened immediately after the first Borderlands and Opening the vault brought iridium to the surface, and then the Hyperion Corporation came and started mining iridium. And they found evidence of a greater vault, so now they're trying to get that open. And that's kind of where you come in. and You're just on a train, and then Handsome Jack blows it up. Who I, This is probably the first time you meet him. Yeah, he's not in the first one at all. No. And no, that's, no. And that's where the game starts after the train blows up, and you wake up in a frozen wasteland. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, while you're, th- I guess, the first playable moment, you're waking up from this frozen area and you meet Mr. Claptrap. Yes. Uh, should we get into the characters first, the classes? Uh, yeah, you could. Yeah, let's talk about Axton. All right, go ahead. Lead us off. Kick us off with Axton. What's his deal? Uh, pretty. Yeah, he's the guy who throws down a turret yeah or a shield or something just like roland in the first game yeah he's the army guy and then there's uh maya who's a siren like lilith with a slightly different power yeah yeah yep. then there's zero yep who, who's a number who speaks in haiku and emojis i guess mm-hmm. yeah what his face is emojis what is he like a, just a ninja a crazy ninja assassin so, yeah i think so is he a robot? I don't remember if he's a robot. You his, played him. His face is a robot. Oh, your, your face, face is a is robot. robot. <laughs> oh, <damn it. laughs> uh, we're just we're two. We're on the same page. I love it. <laughs> no, I don't think he's a robot though. He's definitely weird and eccentric. Yeah. Yeah, I li- I uh I like him. Uh, we're missing uh Salvador, the gun zerker. Yes. Yeah, that guy was pretty cool. He was one of the most busted characters they ever made. And then two DLC characters, which is Krieg the Psycho and Gage? Gage the Mechromancer. Gage, yeah. Right. Mechromancer, by the way, is probably the coolest thing you could ever fucking have on a business card ever. <laughs> <laughs> that is. But uh, who did you guys pick? Your first ever playthrough, do you remember? Maya. Probably Maya or Zero. And it's weird because every time I see somebody else play Maya, it doesn't look like Maya Maya. And I'm <laughs> kind of thrown off. Because so so you're like that's not Maya yeah and you're like oh that's right they have different skins and helmets and other shit oh what's there a seventh character <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was uh, definitely zero the first time I played yeah I remember you and I farming the bee oh we did that so many times and then Terramorphus over and over and over yep good yeah. times all right some, those are the classes good, good I think memories I've maxed all of them up to fifty or whatever you can. Power level. I know I didn't do all of them. I did uh, Axton and I did Zero. Because I did Axton because you guys, at least one of you, well, definitely scientists, probably you two chump slap, but you both had a version of Maya, so I never had to be the siren. So I was like, whatever, I'll be. Yeah, I never Axton. played Axton that much. I think I just power leveled him up and then. I didn't like him. I don't like the soldiers. I like the idea. It's the soldiers are good if you're playing by yourself because you can set a turret and like attack from a different angle or get some heat off you while you're shooting people. But uh, it's also like it's it's not nearly as fun. It's just yeah, it's it's shooting and shooting like it's it's not like varied enough. But whatever. And when you're the siren, as as soon as you get converged and decimation, you can pretty much play by yourself all the time. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I remember using a lot of uh, transfusion grenades for Zero, because I don't know if he had anything that... No, he had health boost for when he would go into his invisibility thing, 
and throw like knives at people, but that was never. That was mostly for like running away. It wasn't so much for, well, yeah, fighting. You, you couldn't just go one shot kill any hard enemies. And so. transfusion grenades are definitely the safest grenades to use. Best grenades. Now, best grenades are AOE grenades, but no, you're wrong. Yeah, storm front or electric chair, awesome grenades. The most fun one is the bonus. Package. Oh, by far. <laughs> <laughs> but but it is not often the smartest one to use. No, I killed myself with that more than enemies. I think. I was like, like when you <laughs> you're in a really small area and you accidentally do that and you're like, oh boy, and it's just you try running away but you don't get away quick enough. Yeah, and then that's it. I had a, like a level five one that I used that when I was level fifty just to see all the explosions. It didn't kill me, luckily. But nice. Yeah, I, I love when I throw it in a room and just walk away, and then you just hear explosions for a boom. solid boom, 10 boom, seconds. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> like, and you're like, okay, I'm pretty sure everything in there is dead. And then you go in. It has its place. It has its applications. Yeah, yeah. But uh, let's uh, – we should probably go over real quick the uh, OG characters from Borderlands 1. Who no, we should probably talk about them when we meet them. Yeah, they pop up in the story. All right. Fine. Fuck it. Let's get into the <laughs> game <laughs> And they listen to our other podcast where they already know about it. Yeah, them. they know all about them. Okay. Well, those characters, I'll just say that they show up again in the narrative. Yeah, after Claptrap shows up, another old character shows up. Is this the same Claptrap? Yes, because it's the last Claptrap. But isn't the Claptrap from the first one, didn't he die in the ninja, interplanetary ninja and assassin thing? DLC doesn't count for these stories. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Is DLC canon? I would think it so. It can't be, right? I think it is. I hmm. I mean, they just did Fight for Sanctuary, which would have to be canon leading into the third one. That's a good point. Let's just say then, yes, they're all canon. All right. <laughs> I don't Sure. Uh, let's. Anyway, you wake up with Claptrap. A Claptrap. Maybe the Claptrap. <laughs> maybe the Claptrap. <laughs> well, at this, either way, at the start of this game, there's only one Claptrap left. Because most of the claptraps were killed in the interplanetary ninja assassin right. DLC. Yep, and the rest of them uh, that survived were killed or discontinued, or they stopped manufacturing, and apparently that was all uh, Jack's doing. Learn about that and in the pre-sequel. Yeah, but no, I'm, I don't remember that at all. But anyway, so we meet Claptrap. He's the first thing we see, and how does our journey begin, scientists? Let's kick us off. Well, he gives you the HUD, and then a voice talks to you, much like Borderlands 1, the same one. The same voice. The same voice, <coughs> yeah. And she says, follow the claptrap. He'll get you to Sanctuary where you need to go, blah, 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 blah. Do you think they're going to do that again in 3? Angel again? Angel's dead. Yeah, but another angel. Oh, well, I shouldn't have said that, I guess. But You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spoilers for later <laughs> in the episode. Bleep it out for 10 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> And then uh, there was there's no real backstory to Jack, is there? Other than obviously the entire game, the pre-sequel. Well, no, you kind of just know he's leading Hyperion. Yeah, is, is he like the president of Hyperion? Something like that. Yeah. The dictator of Hyperion? I have no idea. Yeah. But he thinks he's a good guy, doing the good things, trying to transform Pandora. Well, yeah, we need to get into that a little bit later when we talk about Jack, but uh. So you go through the frozen planet. I forget the name of what planet it is. It's yeah. the same. It's Pandora. Well, it's all on Pandora, yes. Okay, the area of which you are in. The southern shelf. Yeah. Ah, nice. You think I, I would remember this, considering I played through the story like seven times by myself? <laughs> yeah, me too. But no. You're, no. Not, you're not here very long. It was seven years ago. That's a good point. I, I literally just played it like two months ago. Yeah, so then you go through that, and you run into Hammerlock. Yeah. Well, it, Cap, Claptrap needs help getting his eye back in. Yeah, we could skip that. <laughs> and you go to Liars. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a tutorial-esque yeah. mission funny thing about how to sh fight people. You fight a Bolomong named Knuckle Dragger, and then you eventually get his eye back and move on to Sir Hammerlock. Yeah. Who's an interesting character, to say the least. Is this the first time we're meeting him? He wasn't in the first game, was he? I don't believe so. I don't think so. No, I don't, I don't believe so. Either. So you meet Sir Hammerlock and... That's it. 
Well, yeah. yeah. Right, then, Game's over. And it's time for a scientist lock of the week. <laughs> I like now, the, uh, lock. <laughs> the lock of the week. The hammer lock of the week. Well, as soon as you get the li- oh, as soon as you get the Liarsburg, handsome Jack goes on the Echo Net and uh, puts a bounty on the Vault Hunter Hunter's head and Roland's head. Reminds everybody. So the Echo Net is wasn't it in the first Borderlands game where someone took it out so it was not usable? Yeah, and then you fix it. So there's like a central area that controls it, I guess. Yeah, so everybody can hear everybody else, I guess. So it's not exactly radio, but it is radio. It's like those Nextel chirper phones. Oh, okay. that's all they had to say. <laughs> <laughs> like, just go, remember Nextel? Wink. <laughs> did I say wink? or did I do? Uh, they, they, You could do either. <laughs> you uh, talk to Hammerlock a little bit, and he said he's going to head to Sanctuary, and you should head to Sanctuary. It's the best place to go, so... That's what you and Claptrap decide to go do, get his ship and go to Sanctuary. Yeah, I mean, just like every character you're going to meet, uh, we might as well get out of the way, is that they ha- usually have you do a bunch of stupid side missions to help them open their building or clear out an area or make the area habitable, I guess. Yeah, and, well, Hammerlock usually so, has you go kill some kind of creature hunt. Yeah, but. that's kind of his jam is... Yeah hunting but i mean we can skip most of that shit i just you know yeah 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 adding that in there and then you go get claptrap's ship and you eventually work your way to sanctuary and you go knock on the door and they tell you roland isn't there now is this ship the literal ship you fight on no he has a little ship behind it a fucking boat yeah after you beat captain flint you go on the boat and then the boat oh okay yeah after Boom Boom and Boom, then Flint. Boom Boom, for those of you listening and are going to start playing the seven-year-old game, uh, <laughs> that is where you get the bonus package is beating Boom and Boom or Boom Boom or yeah, so the Boom Brothers. Completely worth it. Yes. I, I definitely remember getting that my first run, first character. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was like a level six, so pretty much useless. But... Uh, I do remember getting it immediately and being like, what does orange mean? Oh, I guess that's really good. <laughs> the, oh, oh it's first orange. When I just played through it again, and I played it on the Ultimate Vault Hunter difficulty, when I got the boom, boom, I got the bonus package. It was like level 54. It was awesome. Nice. 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 But uh, at this point, you get in the ship, and do you go to Sanctuary? Or you go, you like... You work your way to it. Yeah, you you work your way. I, yeah, that's a good way to put it. And you get to the other area. I think it's the Arid Nexus. Is that where Sanctuary originally is? No. No. Cool. It's in another cold Yeah, it's place. an icy. Th- I don't remember. I don't remember what it's called, though. But you get to the door, and Roland tells you you have to go find Captain or Corporal Reese to get back Corporal in. Corporal Reese. Yeah. That's right. To prove yeah. yourself to the resistance. I well, guess. and they need shields Yeah, <laughs> for Sanctuary. So you go find him. You get the power core from the bad guys. And you become an honorary Crimson Raider, and they let you in. Woo! Nice. Nice. And then... The AI contacts you to tell you to find Roland, and that you're going to have to talk to Scooter. And this is... Uh, is this the intro to Scooter? Was he in the first game? I don't remember anything. Uh, I don't think he was, but... His car shit was yeah, there. Yeah, his car shit was there. Right, like, we had his voice. Yeah. And, uh... But this is the first time I think he's in the story proper yeah so you have your meeting with scooter who is another great character in this yeah mm, rest in peace scooter and w- whoa whoa spoiler <laughs> well, <laughs> we talked I mean, about it in the first one yeah i know yeah <laughs> we did mention it like a spoiler we've already spoiled yeah for, uh, and nobody who for people who haven't played it he dies in tales from the borderlands yeah. in, a, in a pretty yep. badass way damn i hope yeah, he's he jumping out of here gulch hero. <laughs> and then his, I believe his last line is catch a ride I think it is <laughs> as he's riding a missile or something it's pretty yeah. badass oh, it's if, you guys, if you guys haven't played Tales from the Borderlands yet go play it it's really good it's one of the best finger gun fight scenes ever I've never played it I mean it's top three for me yeah I don't know if I'd give it one <laughs> mm, but uh mm, probably, third, top three. probably third 
right. <laughs> and you do some bullshit around Sanctuary, and then Scooter tells you that Roland left you a message at his place. The place is the... Crimson Raiders headquarters. It's in Sanctuary. Right. In Sanctuary. Your, your vault area, your... You're everything, basically, where you hang out and go back to. Yeah. Home base. And you also, during this, you meet the other characters of Sanctuary, like Moxie and Crazy Earl and Marcus. And yeah. Yeah, it's like you get those little missions that you were talking about, the bullshit ones, and it's kind of like getting to know Sanctuary and its yeah. people. Dr. Zed. Like Dr. Zed, you get a shield real quick. Crazy Earl, and they show you like how to exchange Iridium for upgrades. And Moxie's got her own bar now. So, yeah, and Sir Hammerlock is there in Moxie's bar, and Marcus has a store. Yeah, it's where all the rabble of uh, Pandora come. Right, right, right. And then, uh, so you go to the headquarters and get Roland's message, and he tells you to find the Firehawk. That'll help. Whatever. So you go on a mission to find the Firehawk, and you fight through this whole. Who tells you to find the Firehawk? Roland and his echo that he leaves you. Oh, what? <laughs> At least no. Oh, because like, long. wasn't it like? Uh, I'm. It's coming back to me now. I missed it in the cutscene movie, but uh, weren't they a group of bandits or psychos or something that worship the Firehawk? There is some there, yeah. Yeah. And that they, they like. There's saw also him somewhere fighting them. There's a group fighting them and a group that's on their side, on the Firehawk side. I thought like somebody said Firehawk might have Roland or no. Yeah, that's what they think. The Firehawk might have taken him. Okay, but. Was there a side mission where you had to sacrifice a small psycho? Yes. Or a psycho little person? Yes, there was. There, his name his name was Matchstick, I think. No. <laughs> Matchstick was Tiny Tina's guest. Wasn't no, he? you're thinking of Flesh Stick. Yeah, flesh oh, stick. my bad. My bad. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, completely different characters. <laughs> One's a psycho God. little person. One's just a psycho. <laughs> There's so many characters in this fucking game, but uh, it was I. I the reason I'm bringing that up is because I'm pretty sure that he was hiding in a toilet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. That okay. did happen. I didn't didn't make that up. He's really? not the only character in Borderlands to hide in a toilet. Yeah, a lot of people hide in toilets. And there are a lot of toilets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there are. And by toilets, we're of course talking about porta johns. In case uh, you're listening to this episode, but have somehow never played this game. And they all have guns in them and stuff. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> Never really any good ones. And why is it every time you open the door, poo comes out of the, the thing? Every time, they, it just shoots a little bit of poo out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that. I hide it all the time. I think you wanted to see it. <laughs> yeah, there's always a little poo shooting out. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's what shot out some weapons, didn't it? Yeah. It kind of yeah. like makes a splurting sound. Yeah. But it doesn't, oh, yeah, see, it doesn't oh, have oh. to be poo. You make it poo. <laughs> oh. oh, you think it's fucking Mountain Dew coming out of the toilet section? Like, it could be vomit. Yeah, okay. and, and just a bunch of piss. <laughs> but you have to make it poo. It's a lot of piss. Hashtag bunch of piss. I think this place is called Colburn Cavern. Cavern Canyon, maybe. Colburn Canyon. 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 Something like that. So you fight... Uh, there, before you get there, there's a weapon that you farm here, and I believe it was one of your favorites, wasn't it? Hellfire. You have to. I think yeah. you, you can't get it until later in the game, but there's another section of that. It's in this. It's in the same map. Yeah. You have to fight the fire ant. Yeah. Hellfire, the best weapon I used in Borderlands One and Two. Yeah. It's all right. Oh, we're we're gonna get to our favorite weapons. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's a section in here, but uh. So, so you fight through Colburn Canyon, and you get to the end, and you find the Firehawk. Who is Lilith from the first game, the siren. And apparently (laughs) she lets you know that the uh, appearance of Iridium has enhanced her powers. She's much more powerful than she used to be. She's using it like a drug, though. She should really calm down. Hey, she looks good doing it. Let her do it. Uh, She looks, yeah, until she uses it all up and she's like, her teeth start falling out. Go grab me some. (laughs) Did you say her teeth start falling out? (laughs) I assume it's it's like like meth, yeah. Yeah, well, that's going to happen. So, <laughs> yeah, and then you have to basically do the classic Borderlands, I guess, uh, I don't want to say tower defense, but the... Survive. Survive wave. What do they call it? Wave. Why can't I remember the... N- no, there's... 
the game mode that was popular in uh, Gears of War. Horde. Survival. Horde. There it is. Horde. Horde. There Horde. It is. All right. So, Jesus, that shouldn't have taken that long. No, it should enough. No. Let's cut <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, cut right, right. To, cut right to Horde, and then we'll cut off. <laughs> oh, it's a uh, Horde. <laughs> Perfect. But, uh, yeah, you do the little Horde section, and you're in, like, a control room. Mm-hmm. And then eventually you keep feeding Iridium to Lilith. Uh, Lilith, and she keeps dominating everybody. And then eventually the fight ends, and you, she's like, I'll teleport you back to Sanctuary. And then you move like 10 feet. I think she was trying to teleport you to the dam to save Roland. Yeah. Because she's like, You got to go to the dam. That's where Roland is. Yeah, get to is. the Bloodshot Stronghold and save Roland. They're keeping him prisoner there. And she teleports you 10 feet. So you have to f- fight your way there. She did that on purpose. I, I think, think she so. knows damn well how to teleport people. Yeah, because she does. Well, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. So you do the bullshit to try and get into the Bloodhot Stronghold, and they won't let you in because you don't have the right car. <laughs> so you, this is where you go to the Arid Nexus. Uh, and you meet another great character who is Scooter's sister and Moxie's child, Ellie. Ellie. Yep, yep. I was going to say, is this where you meet Ellie? But then you led us right there. And uh, Ellie's pretty great. I, I like everything. She's very, she reminds me a lot of Pam from Archer. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, kind of. Kind of sounds like her, too. Her. Yeah, sounds like the voice was modeled after. Maybe it's the same voice actor. Ooh, I'll look that but up. It, yeah, mo- Ellie, Ellie likes scooters, also like a mechanic type person. But Yeah, she's like, well, you need to make a... What is it called? Bloodshot car? Yeah. So you have to go around blowing up cars for her so she can get parts. Which is awesome. Like, yeah. you need to make a car that looks like theirs, so go blow up a bunch of their cars. And then we'll uh, make you a new car. Don't go steal a car. That'd yeah. be way too easy. Well, this way we can digestruct it. And you can get it uh, anywhere okay. you want. Good old digestructing. <laughs> there Which was a how anything comes in this section there's like five or six legendary weapons you can farm in the air nexus there's a lot yeah there's the maggie the maggie the the big the bane you get in this part nukem, the nukem thing oh yeah the nukem yeah which is the second best uh, rocket launcher there was the jacob's assault rifle that i never got the one gun i couldn't get in that game. Anyway, anyway. Ellie, after you get the thing, you work your way to the Bloodshot Dam and you go to save Roland. And you fight your way through the dam, killing a bunch of stupid people. Like Big Maw. Yeah. And there's another one in there, like Mike something. Big Mike, maybe. Maybe. But you get... There's like a, there's a whole section or a whole group of... I guess, named characters, but they're not, like, bosses. They're not really, not, like, real bosses. Yeah. It's kind of, like, midway, like, middle characters. I don't know how to explain them. Badasses. Sort Mini of. bosses? Wow. Did you come up with that right now? Yeah. Let's I like that. Yeah. We'll use that. <laughs> let's got Mini bosses. <clears throat> well, did you say mini boss? I tried to. <laughs> well, I love it. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, sorry to just completely stop you cold. That's fine. So you get to, <laughs> after some bullshit, you save Roland and you go back to Sanctuary. Uh, you know what I just found well, out? There's you, a lot of bullshit. What? You fight through the dam and you fight through the dam and then you fight on top of the dam. Yeah. And I then just you wanted save Roland. to say. I was going to cut it all out. The warden fight. I remember that being fucking annoying. I, yeah, because when you fight him when you're a low level, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. I just found out. Well, I don't even know if this is true, but I read somewhere because this glitched out on me the last time I played it, like two months ago. So I Googled it, how to fix it, and apparently there's mm-hmm. a way you can lose this fight, and they take Roland to the prison. It's like an off-the-map thing where there's like one quest there, but if they take if the warden escapes with Roland, they take Roland there, and you have well, to like save if you him. you die from. fighting the warden? I don't even know exactly how it happens. Yeah, because like, I've died fighting the warden thousands yeah, of so times. Yeah, so have I. Oh, okay. Maybe. I was just thinking, like, didn't you find Roland in the prison, but that was right before this? Yeah, well, the prison in the... And then... The lead up to the yeah, gotcha. Well, huh. robots do break in and take Roland, the Hyperion right. robots from yeah. the Bloodshots, the Warden, because he doesn't want to pay the thing. So anyway, you save Roland and you go back to Sanctuary, and he tells you 
what Handsome Jack's plan is, that he's trying to resurrect and control the warrior, who's just, I guess, a big monster. Yeah, an ancient, huge monster, and I guess the plan was to just unleash him on Pandora so he could kill everybody. Well, he'd kill all the bandits and all the creatures and stuff, and try and make it better for Hyperion. To make it, quote, unquote, peaceful. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted it to be nice. And he has the vault key, and he's just trying to find this. And uh, as if you played all the Borderlands games, you know, apparently vaults all are full of just creatures, huge monsters. If you played the first one, you know that there's a big tentacle monster in the vault. Well, there's also in the pre-sequel and Tales from the Borderlands, the open vaults, and well, there's big monsters. The one before this. Yeah. And he tells you that he has, uh, Roland has a spy in, I can't think of what the place is called. Tundra Express. Tundra Express. And he has found the key, so go talk to him. Right, right. So you wake your way to Tundra Express, and his spy is Mordecai and Bloodwing. Ah, get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good old Bloodwing. And he tells you that, and then he tells you that his sources tell him that the vault's on a train that's going to be passing by, so they're going to try and hijack the train. And you need to enlist the help of probably the best character in the game, Tina. Tiny. Tiny Tina. <laughs> then you go meet Tiny Tina. I mean, I remember the first time I met Tiny Tina and loved everything about her. And now I'm just kind of, I think I'm done. I think I'm done with Tiny Tina. What? I think so. Voiced by a great voiced actress, Ashley Birch. I don't know. Oh, what what else has she done? She was Chloe in before this. Uh, I can't think of what that thing's called. Them games called Life is Strange. She did a lot of games and shit. Yeah, she was uh, Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, nice. I don't even remember her voice. I'm sure, she's she's done a lot, but Attack on Titan. She's one of the characters on that. Sasha Bross, I guess is her name. Yeah. I've never seen Attack yeah. on Titan. Neither have I. Yeah. A lot of people like it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, she's she's got a lot of credits to her name. A lot of video games, a lot of voice work. But uh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, anyway, Tiny Tina, she basically, we do that thing again where it's like. Do a bunch of stuff for me. Yeah, exactly. I'll help you out if you do a bunch of stuff for me. And, yeah, then you. Eventually, blow up the train track, and it ta- knocks the train off the rails, and you go and try and get the vault key from the train. And you get to where the train fell off the track, and you're jumped by Jack's, I guess, super robot, Wilhelm. Yeah. I love how Angel's like, well, the key's not there, because Jack would have sent Wilhelm there. <gasps> yeah, oh, no. my God. <laughs> yep. And I don't remember Wilhelm being that bad of a boss to fight. No. No, he just had those shield and the regenerating yeah. health or something. I played Wilhelm in the pre-sequel. He's pretty awesome. Wolf and Saint were the surveyors he had flying around him. Yeah. He has a cool weapon. No, it's not cool. I don't remember what it was. I don't know. Some type of Hyperion little blob yeah. thrower. But the vault key wasn't on the train, and it was just a trap to try and get Wilhelm to kill you. But uh, you kicked his ass anyway, but you did find a power core there, didn't yes. you? <laughs> it's funny because every time in my notes I have written H.J. instead of Handsome Jack. Because <laughs> <laughs> now I have nice. got a new power core and H.J. is pissed. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. Ah, uh, toilet humor. We are not above it. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone's like, hey, that power core looks awesome. Let's yeah, jam that in. We it. never have to worry about recharging it or anything. Shield generator. Yeah, everyone's really excited about this new power core. Yeah, so you put the new power core in, and it was a trap. It ah, no. gave Angel, the voice who's t- been talking to you, control of everything, and she lowers the shields, and the Hyperion satellite starts sh- moonshotting Sanctuary. So Scooter and Roland and Lilith run around trying to get things, and they eventually... Lift Sanctuary off the ground, and Lilith transports it out of the way. See, that's what I'm saying. She knows exactly what she's doing. Yeah, I know. She moves the whole thing, but she can't move you more than I like feet. how she mo- she pushes you outside. Yeah. Like, Here, just go over there and watch it, because it's going to be cool looking. What was her excuse for that? Oops. 
Oh, okay. And it makes a big hole in the ground, which is there's a whole bunch of optional quests in the game underneath. But where you find oh, that's right. That's it's like a whole other area. Yeah, you find some awesome weapons down there too. Yeah, I forgot about that. Turtle shield. What the fuck's it called? Fabled tortoise. Yeah. And nice. And there's a Dark Souls. Uh, oh yeah, the Dark Souls section. Easter egg. That was pretty cool. And the Minecraft section. And that was this is the area where uh well this is the point in the story where Jack says yeah this was my plan it's been the plan for the last five years yeah I got those suckers to get the vault key for me and I stole it from Tannis yeah so his plan was to get Wilhelm killed I guess yeah that's silly he's Jack he's arrogant and pompous <laughs> five steps ahead he's yep. playing three D checkers well he probably thought that Wilhelm could kill them yeah. Or at least he had a backup plan yeah. if he didn't. The worst the worst case scenario is Wilhelm dies and he gets the power core. True. Okay. But after Sanctuary teleports away, uh, the AI angel tells you to go through the fridge to the highlands. So you could fast travel back. So you can tr- so you, yeah, so you can get to where she that's where Sanctuary is gonna appear. So you can work your way there. And I guess you still trust Angel because she's trying to. Well, yeah, this is where she tells you, like, I have the key. Yeah. Come to me. This is what you got to do. Trying to gain your trust back. Yeah, I don't. And it. Basically, the whole thing with Angel, I thought, was a little suspicious because she just tried to kill you. And then all of a sudden, you guys all just trust her again. But they they pass it off as like, well. That's this is the best lead we got. Yeah. Yeah, because I think Roland says. Well, yeah, because she fools them in the first one to opening yeah. up the, the vault. But he's like, well, what she's saying seems nearly impossible. So it doesn't seem Well, that, like that comes up later. But yeah. So you work your way through a whole bunch of maps through the fridge, which is another great place, a place I hated the most probably. Oh, yeah. Those little thieves and shit. Yeah, the little thieves, and it's full of racks and crystalisks. <laughs> yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. Pain in the ass. Yeah, I, I remember that. And it's all like tunnels, and then you open to different areas. And yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. And I forgot all about those little fucking thieves that would like steal your loot and run away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> steal a whole bunch of money. Yeah, those guys are awesome. You should be able to play as one of them. A rat? Yeah. And you work your way through to the Highlands, which is a huge area. Goes through a lot of things. Mm hmm. And you have to. Steal a signal from Hyperion to re- uh, recreate an uplink to the sanctuary fast travel, which is... Now, go ahead. I remember this part being a huge yeah. pain in the ass. Well, st- stealing the uplink is a pain in the ass, and Overlook, when you have to defend it, is a pain in the ass. Yeah, like, I remember um, y- they had the uplink, and then a uh, one of the worm things took it and ran away. Yeah. And then you had to go find that boss and then kill that. And I remember having to, like, cheese that, like having to hide behind a <laughs> building because I could not beat it any other way. Yeah, and when you have to stand there for the uplink, and if you're playing one player, yeah, every time you die, it restarts. Oh, my God. And there's so badass hard. loaders and surveyors flying all around. It's really annoying. And, like, barely anywhere to hide. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's just coming at you in that middle open area. It was a pain in the ass. Sure was. But eventually, like as soon as I saw it in the cutscene video, I was like, "Oh, this fucking part!" <laughs> yeah, I almost like, stopped. I got the video. mad again. <laughs> <laughs> Seven years later, just getting. But you eventually, win that fight and re- recreate the fast travel station to Sanctuary, and you travel back to Sanctuary where you and Roland and Lilith and is Mordecai there? No, Mordecai's at the game preserve. I think that's right. Well, they. Uh, they start hatching a plan to get to Lilith or get to Angel. Well, Handsome Jack and Angel tell this is where they're all kind of skeptical of Angel until she sell, tells them that she's in Thousand Cuts and there's she's protected by three things they have to get through. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Yeah, and she has to, you have to go through a death wall, which we're talking about, and then get through a bunker and then open a door that can only be opened by Handsome Jack. And once you figure out how to get through all of those. You should be able to save her, and no matter what you do, don't let Lilith follow. Come in there. So, to get through the Death Wall, they hatch a plan to upgrade because it only lets Hyperion robots through. And since Claptrap is a Hyperion robot, you 
safety side, you got to steal an upgrade for him so he can get through and fight your way through. So your first, I guess, mission to solve these problems is to go to the game preserve and talk to Mordecai because he Cause has, he has the upgrade. upgrade. That's what gotcha. That makes sense. And then he traveled through the whole fucking game preserve. Yeah. Just to get to. Well, you, you get there and they, oh. he says that Bloodwing was captured and the upgrade is on Bloodwing's collar. That's when you have to go through the, yeah, so you travel through the annoying game preserve. I, th- I was going to say, I think I remember that being annoying, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember those fucking invisible assholes. Stalkers. Everywhere. Yeah. Stalkers, yeah. Yeah. Just everywhere. And then they had another, like, tower defense, uh, or another horde mode. Oh, that happens a million times in this. Wasn't, yeah, like, it was their special. Yeah. There was, was Pimon and Tumba. That's what it was, yeah. They have, oh, what did, Pimon had the shotgun, that the TDR shotgun that you threw. And it would fly around shooting things. Yeah, Deliverance, I think I it was called. Remember. And there was a shield or something. There was, yeah, I think it was a there was a shield that P- Tumba had. Man, the weird shit that you remember from this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really amazing. <laughs> so you fight your way all through that, and uh, you get to where Bloodwing was held, and he's not there. So you fight your way through more of the game preserve, and you get to the end, and Jack reveals that he's been doing experiments on Bloodwing. And they show Bloodwing has become mutated by slag and is a huge thing. And yep. it's a boss fight against Bloodwing. Which, being for someone who had played the game through as oh my God. Uh, as him the first time, like this is, this is pretty rough. Yeah, yeah it's, it a, was. it's a terrible moment because you try and save Bloodwing. And he gets tranked by Mordecai. And you get the upgrade off of his chest. And then Jack kills him with an explosion. <laughs> Yeah, I love how Jack's fucking hinting at it the whole time. Yeah, I, I can't remember what that last element yeah. is. It's like, wait, corrosive, electric? I don't remember. Oh, yeah, explosive. But you get the upgrade, and Bloodwing dies, and Mordecai go, kind of goes into rage mode. Oh, yeah, when you're running out, he's just sniping everything. Yeah, you that don't was, even have to fight any that more was enemies. so cool. <laughs> Which, why didn't he do that all the time? Yeah. But, whatever. Then you get the upgrade to Claptrap, and you go and give Claptrap the upgrade, and he turns invisible for some reason. <laughs> yeah. I'm not exactly sure why. If he was the last Claptrap, why were there upgrades? It's just a Hyperion upgrade, I think. Oh, just like a yeah. Mac OS. It's a random yeah. Yeah, Mac OS. <laughs> they went up to like Snow Leopard now on <laughs> Claptrap. I got gotcha. you. But, uh, yeah. Where do we go from here after you finally fucking get well, through this? Well, then Roland says that he knows someone who can help him get through the bunker. And it's the Slab King and Thousand Cuts. So you go and have to meet him, which is another annoying <laughs> place to go through. I didn't think that was that bad. A thousand Cuts? Yeah, couldn't you just always mutate the the raging guys and they could just run around? Ah, you could, yeah. yeah. Slow, but it was fun to watch. I, I vaguely remember like the small, like the uh, the lower bowl area. Where the bandits were like had their living quarters or whatever. I remember that being a lot harder than the whole rest of it. Yeah, because it's always that's kind of a place where they always you think you killed everybody and then you take a step forward and there's guys walking out doors behind you. Yeah, yeah. It was a good. I remember going there a lot to just level up. Yeah, there's a lot of enemies to fight, but you work your way through and then the Slab King sends a whole several more horde waves at you that you have to fight off, and then after you beat them all. He reveals the Slab King was Brick from the first game. Get the fuck out. Yep. <laughs> the final and fourth yeah. character is fine. Who is there. super duper totally fine with you killing all his boys. Yeah, it's kind of he's not a Crimson Raider anymore because he's Yeah, because he's okay with killing everybody. Like literally everybody. Yeah. yeah. Does not apparently matter at all. It's like to Roland him. kicked them out or something? Yeah. Because he didn't like his methods. I, yeah, I think Brick says in this part, he's like, it's all right, you killed a bunch of them. They're stupid. I kill them, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, oh, don't worry about it. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> or something crazy like that. And then he says something like, oh, yeah, by the way, They'll still um, attack if you, you come back to the area, they're going to they're gonna attack you again. Yeah. Like, uh, th- what kind of leader are you that's like... <laughs> yeah, you can't stop them. But he, uh, yeah, like, hey, guys, knock it off. This guy's cool. He says he'll send buzzards to help you get through the bunker. Yeah. So that's the second thing done. Oh, uh, this was my favorite character, though. The sarcastic slab. Oh. <laughs> he just comes out slow oh, clapping. Yeah. He's like, yay. Good job. Good job. <laughs> and there's also, it's also the place where you get the just shoot me in the face quest. 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy's awesome, too. Just shoot me in the face! <laughs> It's just a psycho screaming for you to shoot you in the face, and then the mission thing pops up, and it's like, I guess shoot him in the face? <laughs> 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 and then you do it, and the mission ends, and it's like, what, then doesn't the like flavor text or whatever say, well, that was easy or yeah. something like yeah. that? That was pretty good. Yeah, I think there's a trophy that comes with it. Yeah, classic Borderlands humor. But then you go return to Sanctuary, where you come up with a plan to get through the third hurdle. And it's to steal a bioscan module from one of Handsome Jack's clones, I guess, and to mimic his voice so he can get through the door at the end. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this whole section. I forgot all about this section. And Opportunity, Opportunity? is a place you don't want to forget because it's probably the worst part in the game. It's fucking hard. Just full of badass loaders and surveyors and engineers throwing turrets down and shit. It's really a pain in the ass. I remember there being like a, a whole bunch of robots you had to kill, not just in this area, but in a lot of areas, but only like four different types of robots you ever fought. Yeah, you fought exploders and bulk loaders, gun, gun loaders, loaders, war loaders. Yeah, badass loaders. Yeah, I guess there were more than Well, they're all loaders. Yeah, they're all loaders. I just remember that being annoying where it's like, oh, more robots yeah. that look Pretty similar. Yeah. Oh, they all look almost exactly the same. But I still still went back and played through it like nine times. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was a great game. Had to. I mean, yeah. I don't remember if there was any good weapons in Opportunity. Nothing, Nothing sticks out. Nothing out. Like no. I went back and farmed it. No, I can't remember either. I probably, if there was a good one, I probably didn't want to do it because Opportunity was a pain in the ass. Uh, yeah. There is a elemental Nova shield called Black Hole. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the only one that pops up from Foreman Jasper. Yeah, that was me. Uh, yeah, and he's all the way on the other side of the map, so you had to yeah. fight through everything to get to him. But anyway, after you do all that, you get the bio scan, you mimic Jack's voice, you launch your assault on the bunker to try and get to Angel, which is... Is this when you're trying to get into the bunker, you run into bunker? Yes. Well, you use Claptrap and go through the gate. He lowers it for you. And then you fight your way all the way up to the thing, and then he's like, oh, yeah, bunker's a big flying f- machine. Yeah, so he's like, the bunker's not a place. Yeah. And then... Oh, I, before you get too far into it, I remember this being the area where Jack tells you the story of how he got the vault key. Yeah. And he's like, basically, the they, him and Wilhelm just beat the shit out of Tannis, yeah. Oh. Which is why I guess she's a little off. Well, we forgot to talk about Tannis, too. She's also in Sanctuary. She wasn't in the cut scene movie, really. No, she doesn't really have any... She has no main storylines, yeah. She was more in the first one than this one. I mean, she still has a shitload of side missions, but yeah. it's not like yeah. not nearly She's as many, like the resident important, I guess. scientist vault expert, I guess. Anyway, you fight your way up to bunker, and then you have to fight the bunker, which is eh, that wasn't that bad of a boss. No, no I, I fought no. the bunker so many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I don't remember why. The bitch to try to get the bitch, and that it does he drop the sham too? Yeah, he drops. He the does sham. drop the sham. How do you fucking remember all of these? Jesus. And he drops a a super rare face. Yeah, yeah. and I never got it. Piss me off. But the sham was a great shield. I used it a lot. Which one was that? It's it it's like a it's an absorb shield, but it has a super high absorb chance, like seventy five percent. Oh yeah, it was like every other bullet you yeah. absorbed. Yeah, it was nice. Cool. So you. After you beat the bunker, then you get into the underground layer where Angel is, and you go through with Jack's voice and bioscan, and you get to – you find Angel in a thing, and you see she's a siren. I don't know if you know that before this. No, but just when you open the door. Yeah, and she's like, you got to kill me, and you find out it's not just an AI, and it's an actual siren, one of the six in the universe. You find out it's Jack's daughter. I don't know if it's actually his daughter or if it just calls her his daughter. But he maybe. says it, and she calls him dad. But he's using Angel to charge the key, the vault key, because the vault key can only be used once every 200 years. So he's using the Angel angel to supercharge it. Oh, to make it so he could use it as soon as possible. Yeah. yeah. So you gotcha. f- fight through all of those, and you get to where Angel, I, you kill Angel. And everybody's like, all right, we did it. We stopped Jack. And then Jack shoots Roland in the chest, head? Chest. Chest. Kills Roland and captures Lilith and escapes. Dude, that's like the most badass five seconds. 
just shoots Roland in the back and then throws a, a chain a collar on Lilith and yeah. escapes with her. That's so cool. Because Lilith showed up despite Angel saying, don't come. Is that why she didn't want him to come so Jack won't take her? Yeah. Because um. then she, now Jack's plan is to use Lilith to supercharge the key. But how did Roland know that Angel was a real person and a siren? He didn't until you got there. Well, she tells you pretty much like, Come get me. But yeah. yeah, earlier when they were gearing up for the mission, you're right, where Roland said he didn't want Lilith there. Well, no. Angel says don't let Lilith yeah, come. Angel's the one who says Oh, that. it was Angel. Okay. Gotcha. And Roland says, Maybe you should stay here. Yeah, Lilith's like, What the fuck? What'd I do to that bitch? Yeah, and Roland says stay in sanctuary and then she doesn't listen. Fucking Lilith. Classic. Thinks she's the biggest shit ever firehawk lady. Yeah. <laughs> So now everybody's super sad that Roland is dead because, and you tell the important characters because they want to keep it mostly a secret. Yeah, and then they, you go around talking to everybody back at Sanctuary, and then they all have to like tell you little stories of Borderlands One. Yeah, and how Roland helped them. Yeah, it was pretty cool, but it was still a fucking bummer. Yeah, first you lose Bloodwing, and then I was Roland. more upset with Bloodwing. Yeah, I always thought Roland was kind of a douche, but yeah, like I said, I don't like the army guys. So, well, I do. I don't remember him being the leader or the leader type until we got to Borderlands 2 and everyone's like, oh, he's in charge. Like, wait, what? I get. I just okay. don't think anyone else wanted to be in charge. He's kind of one that fits the best out of the four characters. Mordecai do- yeah. doesn't seem like he cares at all. No. And, and he's Rick more of like a spy type. kill people. Yeah. But, yeah, he made sense. Yeah. And it was, a, it was a sad moment. It has a lot to do with the best DLC, Tiny Tina's yeah, Assault on Dragon Keep. I know I'm gonna watch oh, that. Oh yeah, gonna watch that cutscene movie. Yeah, we should just do all the cutscenes. <laughs> is one. You should. It's pretty good. It's it's a good story edition. Uh, so then they start hatching a plan to get at Handsome Jack. You have to do a bunch of bullshit. Go through the info blockade where you fight Saturn. Who's it? Oh annoying. yeah, that's where the the B shield was. No, it? the B was the radio free. There was a guy that was running a radio. It's, it's around there. I think it's like the right, by the, yeah, right yeah. by the tube or whatever. Yeah. But you go up there. And you have to do a bunch of get like bombs and stuff to open pathways. And it's <laughs> the one part is one of my favorite parts of the normal missions when you have to go up and beat that buzzard and try and piss the guy off so you can steal it. The buzzards can steal uh, bombs. Oh, wait. Don't look. Yeah. He's like, blow it up and don't look back. <laughs> look like a real badass. <laughs> so you blow it up and you turn around and walk away. And the guy on the radio is like, they're not even looking at the explosion. <laughs> so good <laughs> and also there's also the part where the buzzers are stealing all the bombs and stuff and he's like just jump off and go back to where you were and you jump off the thing he's like oh my god he did it <laughs> he just jumped down from the bird's nest home <laughs> i do remember seeing because this was right around the time that dude like parachuted from the atmosphere <laughs> the ri- the oh, rebel. Yeah. remember that what the hell is that guy's name uh who cares but uh <laughs> there's a. Uh, uh, someone took like the text and the HUD from Borderlands, and they had the picture of him jumping out. And it's like, <laughs> did you just jump? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's pretty cool. So you do a whole I'll bunch. Find, of if I can find it, I'll put it on the Instagram if I can find it. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I remember that night you said that. There's, you go through a whole bunch of bullshit, and you eventually get to Heroes Pass, and Claptrap tries to open the path for you, and it's kind of annoying. And there's stairs, and it's a big in joke, I guess. Ha uh-huh. ha. And you launch your assault on Heroes Pass, and Mordecai and Brick are helping you fight through all these waves of robots and engineers. That part was hard as shit, yeah. too. Yeah, that was a pain in the ass. And you fight your way to the Vault of the Warrior. And you get there, and Jack's with Lilith, charging the key. Well, you see Brick and Mordecai ship blow up, and I was like, shit, I don't remember them dying. <laughs> no, they jump. Yeah, apparently. You get there, and you fight Jack and... The key gets charged enough, and he pushes it into the vault hole. And then the warrior appears, who's... <laughs> vault hole. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> and then the warrior erupts from the lava that's around you, and you have to fight the warrior. Yep. And yeah, it just so happens that the key's charged perfectly right before you kill Jack. Yeah, and you eventually beat the warrior, who's annoying. So... Here's what I'm confused about. We've, as you mentioned earlier in this episode, you determined that, or we just found out that all of the vaults are essentially like there's no loot in them. They're just being guarded or gateways to monsters, I guess. 
Yeah. But when you kill the monsters, they dump out a whole shitload of loot anyway. Yeah, because they ate all the loot from other people trying to kill them yeah. in the past. Oh, that makes more sense. So yeah, so you, you kill the warrior, you get his loot, and you kill Jack, and you get his loot. And then at like, his face. Yeah. <laughs> and Mordecai and, face. Mordecai and Brick show up, and they're all like, yeah, I celebrate the win. And then Lilith, I forget, does she push the Valky in or she takes it out? I don't remember exactly what she does. Yeah, I don't know. How did that? But yeah, a map, map appears show up. and shows, I guess, pathways to multiple vaults on multiple planets and doing lots of things. And that's kind of where it ends. Like, oh, I guess we got a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah, it's a lot like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. The ending. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. It's almost exactly like that. <laughs> 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 and then the game ends. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's uh, that's the game right there. So, uh, scientists, you have a lot of memories, I guess because you played it the most recently, or you're a freak of nature, but you remember a lot of the weapons and shields and stuff. What what were your go-tos? What were your favorites here? Well, I already said the Hellfire, because it was yep, yep. just the best SMG. I think it's the only one that procs multiple times on the a, uh, DOT. He's making these words up. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I think all the other ones extend the duration, but the Hellfire procs again and does twice as much damage over time. Oh, uh, that makes sense. Uh, I liked all of Moxie's stuff. The good touch, the bad touch, the heartbreaker. They were all good weapons. Two oh, yeah, those are great. Yeah. The heartbreaker is what I used against Terramorphous a lot. I used the Neogenitor shield, which was an adaptation shield. I used that one probably the most, or the Sham. Trying to think of what other weapons. Uh, the Baby Maker. Oh, uh, Baby Maker was awesome. Baby Maker was awesome. Is that that's not that's not the one that spins. There's one that like. No, that one I blows can't up into two little ones and yeah. then blows up again. Yeah, it, it does like a whatever those type of grenades are called. But there was also the SMG that did the the bouncing Betty grenade that you threw it and it would spin around and shoot. Maybe oh that, yeah, I forgot about that one. I don't remember. I, that I forget one. what I forget what that one was called. Deliverance was good. The TDR shotgun that flew around shooting things. I'm going to throw one in there. Maggie. The Maggie was one of my oh, favorites. Yeah. And I uh, used Storm Funk Grenade. Is Storm it Funk? Storm Front. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I heard Funk, too. And I think, I think there was awesome. one called Four Seasons that I used. It was another AOE one, but it did different types of elemental damage. Like, it did all four of them. Nice. Like the Chimera from yeah, Borderlands yeah. 1. Um, you are correct. It is called the Four Seasons. Yes, of course he's right. Uh, of course, yeah. Everyone he's named so far, especially the ones that you get from Timon and Pumba or Pum- <laughs> Pumon and Tumba. Pumon and Tumba, which you also know their names correctly. But uh, yeah, you were correct about those two. The deliverance. Which one was it? The deliverance and the sham. Is that and where you get the sham? I thought it was from Bunker, but I think the sham's from Bunker. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're right. Yeah, the sham is from Bunker. You get a different shield from Pumba. I can't remember what it is. Um, I can't tell you how many times I saw something orange on the screen. I was like, that, oh, it's a sham again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Deliverance is from Tumba. I remember And that. the Transformer is That's from it. Pumon. Transformer. I don't know. What were your favorites? I, in the beginning, before they nerfed the shit out of the conference call, I used <laughs> of course the conference yeah, call of course and, the sh- and the B. This is the guy. Hold on. Let's stop you right really? now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> This is the guy who took duping to a whole new level. <laughs> I wouldn't say to a whole new level. <laughs> well, you reap the benefits of other people's dupes. Well, I remember going into a public game and walking in there, and some dude just dumps a whole bunch of legendaries on the floor and then leaves. I was like, um, That's thanks, bro. <laughs> That's how he got his conference call. He didn't beat the warrior. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't even beat the warrior when he got it. Shit's no, I, I remember – trying to do it and like legitimately and get a conference call i remember good. i remember you doing that because it was when i was trying to kill terramorphous and get the height of terramorphous oh I that was an excellent shield legit got the conference call once and it was a shitty one <laughs> but uh i can't believe we haven't brought up the bane yet <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> the best gun in any game ever yeah you can't run with it you really? can't run and it just makes the most annoying fucking sound That's ever it's pretty fun <laughs> 
like blah, 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 or something insane like that. It was great. And then you're like, because you see the stats, and you're like, oh, this gun's great. Yeah, it does a lot of damage. <laughs> and then you equip it, and you're like, oh, god damn it. Was the vol- a, I can't. I can't use this. Yeah. Was the volcano in this one too? Yeah. yeah, that was a good sniper. I remember rolling with the volcano as my sniper for a long time, but never really using snipers that much in this yeah. one. I always carried it just in case I needed it, but and never, I never used it because I used the volcano in Borderlands One a lot. So I kept, I got it in the second one. I don't remember where you got the volcano. I think you, the volcano dropped from the warrior. Maybe. It was definitely a no. The pitchfork. Pitchfork dropped from the dropped warrior. From yeah. The warrior. You guys are fucking ridiculous. The volcano, <laughs> the volcano did drop from the warrior. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 okay, okay. <laughs> the pitchfork dropped from Terramorphus. Oh, okay. There we go. I'm getting those and confused. it also dropped the blood of Terramorphus, as we all know, and the, the hide of Terramorphus, layer yeah. of Terramorphus, like the class mod, legendary class, class mods. Yeah. It also had the the blue shotgun teeth of Terramorphus, which shot in like biting teeth. Oh yeah, that was pretty neat. Yeah, they really took they they took a step up with these. Uh, I used I remember using uh, the Varuk. Oh rifle. yeah, that right was there. my first legendary I got out of the vending machine. I think. Yeah, I remember using the shit out of that because it's get it, it's the Varuk assault rifle. Mm-hmm. Varuk assault, yeah. get it, get it. Yeah, we all get it. <laughs> and the, yeah, it was a good band <laughs> from the late nineties. <laughs> Well, the flavor text is, I want that rifle, Daddy, like the character in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. In case you didn't get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For those dummies out there who didn't get it, right? I probably Idiots. didn't get it until I read the flavor text myself. But I'm trying to remember some other good weapons. And I mean, you named a shitload of them. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking through the list. I don't, re- I don't remember Bitch at all. That was my favorite. Yeah. Chump Slap farm bunker forever to get the bitch. It had a large magazine and... The longer you held the trigger, the steadier it would be. It was so good. Any any of the TDR weapons were good. Well, we can look by just TDR here. We my, got, uh, they had my favorite rocket launcher, right. the Bada Boom. All right, new question. Favorite gun manufacturer? Mally One. You? Oh, jeez. Um, I'm going Jacobs before you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, I, I, Jacobs would be my least favorite. Yeah, I never use Jacobs. I love Jacobs. I think Hyperion, because they were the more like techie type weapons. Yeah. Oh, they were the worst. Well, I was except for the worst. bitch. <laughs> except for the, I used the, the one. I the Mali one was the did. elemental one, so I used those all the time. Yeah. Was Malawan the ones that always blew up when you threw them? No, those are TDORs. TDORs. Uh, those, TDORs. those were good too. Uh, TDOR, uh, a couple of ones we didn't name. The Kerb Blaster. <laughs> I, I don't remember from Midgemong and the Southern Shelf. Yeah, who is Torg the ones with the elect the explosive ones? Yeah, those were pretty good too. Yeah, he had a bunch of them. I don't remember if they're from his DLC or not, but there was a tiny Tina weapon that was a Torg one. That was just awesome. There was a glitched one that would do more damage every time it hit or something like that. <laughs> and I got it up to like hundreds of thousands of damage every hit. It was disgusting. I don't remember anything about it other than that. Yeah, I don't remember for this. I definitely exploited the B in conference call for a long time. <laughs> and then when they when, when they patched it, I'm like, I, I don't need to play Borderlands. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how do you even play anymore? <laughs> this game's harder than I remember. <laughs> couple more we missed. The unkept, unkempt Harold. That was a oh, the Harold, yeah. yeah. Which I forgot about. The I Rolling think that Thunder. Is, is Harold uh, Jacobs? Yes. Jacobs, yeah. No, yeah. that's Torg. Oh, it's Torg. It's Torg. Is it the one that shoots three? Oh, let me take a look here. It is it's a play on Dirty Harry for those people in our audience that are under like thirty five. Yeah, because he says like how many go how many do I have in the chamber is the flavor text or something. Oh. Uh fire seven shots in an accelerating yeah. horizontal spread at the cost of three per shot. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Right. It's like the pitchfork, but uh Pistol. Uh, bunny? I don't remember that. Oh, no, that was a rocket launcher. I remember the bunny. I remember the bada boom you got from Donkey Mong. I used that. Yeah, I used that one for a lot, too. Because it fired like six rockets for every two you shot or something. Didn't Knuckle Dragger have a cool one? Yeah. The Hornet? Maybe. It was the con- it was really good. It's a corrosive weapon. Yeah. Uh, that was 
Well, there's a repeater from Knuckle Dragger. Yeah, you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how many of these. It's one of my How many of these games. you remember? Hector's Paradise is another repeater pistol and from Echoes of the Past. Reward. I think the DLC had some good weapons too. I used yeah, the yeah. typo oh, negative sure. grenade, which is just a huge transfusion. Yeah, you could get a class mod that would regen your health yeah. constantly. Well, when you can get to level 80, you just take the things that regen your health. That's what I did. All right, Jesus. Well, that was quite a talk on <laughs> <laughs> all the fucking weapons. Christ. I guess let's uh, let's get to the final thoughts. How about it? Let's do it. Tell us yours. Uh, you want me to go first? Oh. Yeah. With uh, my final thoughts, would I play it, would I score it, did the story work for me, you mean? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, uh, I think yeah. that's what you're saying. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Um, okay, final thoughts. Uh, it was a great game. Very addictive. Uh, I played uh, probably over 100 hours in this game easily. 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 Uh, I thought the story was good enough... It certainly wasn't bad. It was it was a good story, and the moments, like the high impact character moments, like when Roland dies or when Bloodwing dies, uh, they earned them, and they were sad. Like it it, they were good moments, and I love the fact when they kill, like when video games or movies or series or whatever kill important story characters, because it shows that there's stakes. Yeah, and like no one's safe. Anyone could die. It's not like a fucking Marvel movie where everyone survives until the end, except for, I guess, one of them. What are you talking about? Like, five people died in the Infinity War. Well, yeah. I That's what I said. One, one of them. Oh, uh, whatever. Oh, one movie. Yeah. yeah. I thought you were talking about one person. No, no, no. One movie where everyone died. But like all the other Avengers movies, no one ever died. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, the story. So I'll say the story worked for me. Uh, would I play it? I don't think I can do it again. I really don't, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not this close. To I Lord loved 3. it. No, it's just I played it through the story. If I had to go through the story again, like I was getting like PTSD flashbacks watching this. <laughs> I hear you. So if I had, if I had to play the story again, I'd lose my mind. But uh, first, like four times, it was great. <laughs> um, <laughs> so as far as the score goes, I don't remember what I gave the first Borderlands, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a nice solid 18 out of 27. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, what about you, scientists? Would you play it? Would you score it? Did the story work for you? I did like the story. Like you said, important people dying helps. The... No, I guess it doesn't help, but it makes the story better. <laughs> important right. ping, people dying uh, is the only thing. The villain was interesting and thought he was doing the right thing to himself, even though it was fucked up. <laughs> so that kind of made it. Whatever and made it believable. Yeah, it right uh, wrapped up a bunch of stuff in Borderlands One you didn't know, like Angel and that. I like mm -hmm. how they fleshed out the characters from the first one. Like you, they're kind of just faceless protagonists in the first one, and now they're Mordecai and Brick, and uh, they actually have yeah personalities. Yeah, and I like they introduce. There's a bunch of characters good and bad, who are interesting, like Tiny Tina and Moxie, Sir Hammerlock. Yeah, great Allie. supporting cast. Great, yep, great supporting cast. I played the shit out of it. I don't think I could play it again because I did just play it again like two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely through the entire game on the hardest difficulty again. Played all the DLCs and that. I don't think I could do it again. Jesus. But Borderlands 3 is coming out so I can just transfer all of that to that. I, uh... Decided he's going to give it the best score I gave any game because I think it's my favorite one out of them. Might not have as good story as Bioshock, but I enjoyed it a lot more than Bioshock. So I gave it a 24. Oh. Wow. One of my favorite games of all time. Wow. Quite a high praise from Dr. Scientist. Well, uh, what about you, Chomp Slap? It's your turn. Final thoughts. Whoa. Would you play it? Would you score it? Did the story work for you? Final thoughts. Story worked for me. I liked it. I loved all the characters. I don't think there was a single dud, really. You guys went through all this already. But <laughs> yep. Forgot about Crazy Earl. We got to say him. One thing he didn't say is... It he was ate a car with a fork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. It was funny. Like, every... 
everything had like little humor to it even the darkest parts where your favorite characters died it was still funny there were whatever oh, i forgot to say tons of easter eggs yeah a crazy amount of <laughs> easter eggs like there's probably something that i still didn't understand but yeah i remember finding the dark souls thing before it was even on the internet anyone even knew about it like <laughs> day one i found it i was like this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> uh would i play it again no like you guys i've played through the story what there's four characters so at least eight times <laughs> Jeez. so yeah i'm done with it i even tried to play the when it was free on ps4 i tried but i, I just couldn't do it uh what was the last as score i guess yeah 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 that's what as a score i know i gave borderlands one a 22 because i went back and listened to that episode <laughs> just to find out nice nice I gave this one a 25 out of 27. 67. Wow. That could be the highest. This, I'll just say this is one of my top five favorite games of all time. Probably. So. Maybe even top three. Yeah. I didn't want to go all the way to top three, but yeah, it's probably <laughs> there. I mean, for me, it probably is too. I just had never thought about it that way. I, I played it so much and enjoyed it, but I enjoyed the shit out of it. I wouldn't have played it so much if I didn't like it, but I think – just playing through the story so many times <laughs> <laughs> like when i was a month through like i had the game for a month i was like i, I don't know i don't want to see this anymore yeah i know what you mean like it's not it's not that i hated it but i was like i'm nah, done yeah. i'm just fucking done it got annoying playing like just leveling up your characters or yeah or trying to farm the infinity and never getting it that's yeah, the part yeah. that annoyed me right 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 and i mean maybe yeah i mean 67 is a heck of a score and one of the things that annoyed me the most about the game, I realized when I was playing on the hardest difficulty, how many times you just walk into the all right, I have everything under control. I'll shoot this guy. You shoot one guy, and all of a sudden your shields are down. And you're at no health. Yeah. <laughs> that happens a lot. But Yeah, they can kill you real quick. <laughs> Everybody's got fucking shock weapons to take your shield out. Oh, Jesus. But it was a great game. But watching yeah. this video really got me pumped for Borderlands 3. I was like, I can't even wait. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was the point, right? Yeah. Yep. Well, and um, well, you know, there's this little game coming out before that called NHL 20. So. Uh, I thought you were gonna say blasphemous, because that's coming out on Tuesday. Who's that? I say it like for the last four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Except I'm not gonna get it because I know Borderlands is coming, so I'm just gonna yeah. play indie I games mean, I can beat in four hours. Well, when I backed it on Kickstarter four years ago, I didn't think it would come out <laughs> three days before fucking Borderlands. <laughs> Oh, wouldn't that have been a kick in the nuts? Oh, yeah, by the way, this is going to come out a week before Borderlands 3. You're like, there's going to be a border. It's going to take that fucking long for Borderlands 3. I mean, we did get the pre-sequel to hold us over. And we did get, I guess, Borderlands 2 in VR came out. But I was like, I'm not even – I can't. I can't do it again. <laughs> yeah. I don't care how cool it looks. I can't do it. Yeah, I, I'd love to, and I'm sure it's great, but I can't. Yeah, Dude, I, just I can't. Playing it, like, to see how slowly the back – ground like loaded sometimes <laughs> i could only imagine how bad it would be in vr oh yeah let's not even let's not even <laughs> let's not go and, there and we could dedicate a whole episode yet to the dlc and then the pre-sequel and tales from the borderlands before we even get the borderlands 3 story we'd have to yeah yeah no for sure yeah definitely the dlc is at least one episode if not more there's a lot of story that happens I know. You yeah, the me. DLCs are like 40 minutes each <laughs> to watch. But, uh, well, that does it. I mean, that's the game. Uh, so let's why, why don't we go ahead and move on to our favorite segment of every week, which is Scientist's Lock of the Week. Every week we ask scientists for a 100% guaranteed gambling pick. So this week, scientists, who do you got? In honor of uh, NHL games starting up and NHL coming out, I'm going to go to the Women's KHL League in Russia. Nice. Take Ajidol UFA over Szechuan. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You know how hard it was to research Russian? I didn't know if you got those names right. Ajidol? Ajidol. Ajidol. I don't, hey, you know how hard it is to look for Russian Super League names, especially women's one, because they're not in English. I'm sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably on a list somewhere now. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty great. Uh, so, wait, which team did you say has got the win? Ajidel UFA over Szechuan. Straight, Straight win. win. Oh. 
Straight win? Okay. Usually you do pick the straight win because that's the guaranteed pick. Yeah, it's an easier lock. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, <laughs> go with and then pick them. <laughs> and then <laughs> uh, what you're going to want to do is take all your stuff and sell it, get that money, sell that money, and put it all in this game because it's a guaranteed lock. It's a sure thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chump Slap. Uh, that's going to go ahead and take us to our favorite segment of every week, which is Chump Slap's recommendation window. Every week we ask Chump Slap for a recommendation, and this week I actually prepared. Oh, geez. So It's a sure Chump thing. <laughs> <laughs> Chump Slap, can you give us a recommendation for the best type of pasta out there and preferably a dish that involves it? I'm going to go with uh, the straight spiral pasta and... You know, I mean, you can get it any any type of brand. It doesn't really matter. I'd go with the heirloom shit, you know, the good stuff. But Right, right, of course. A dish that involves it, we're going to go with classic fucking pasta salad. <laughs> oh, oh. You wow, know, some, nice. Some Italian dressing, some pepperoni pieces, a little cheese, onions, green peppers, celery, black olives. I ran out of things to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's green peppers. Nailed it there. I think I said that. No, I don't know. I wasn't listening. <laughs> of course, nobody was listening. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd be surprised if anyone's still listening at this point. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, say someone wanted to check in and send us an email and say, "Dude, I listened to that whole Borderlands Two episode and I loved it and or hated it." Where would they uh send that email to, Sir Chompslap? Well, they'll just send that to plottytime at gmail dot com, and I will personally respond to each and every one. He's got a 100% response rate right now. Bo Go ahead, See if you can overwhelm him. I dare you. I dare you. I have <laughs> nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, if they did send us an email that didn't get a response in a quick enough time and wanted to yell at us in real time, where would they do that, Dr. Scientist? Well, in real time, nowhere. But if you wanted us to check Twitter once a week, you're getting <laughs> at plotty time on Twitter or Instagram. Oh, yep, that's exactly what I meant, scientists. <laughs> thank you for clearing that up. At least someone's checking it. Yeah. <laughs> someone's right. Well, uh, that about does it for us this week. So, I don't know. Take care, play some games, and we'll talk to you next week. Peace. Bye. Later. Baiting. Baiting. <laughs> <laughs>